Welcome to the Mario Era, Chapter 101. 101 de Mario! You didn't hide your recruits! You didn't hide them! I told you to hide your recruits! And you didn't hide them! You talked so much shit all summer. <laughs> you know you, you know you did. You know you did. We heard it all. He, he can't recruit because he doesn't have Rui's money. Can't recruit because he has a one. <laughs> it's receipt season. Who's got receipts? How you, how you boys doing? Who's got receipts? <laughs> A lot of receipts out there. You know what I did see a lot of too today? Hide your recruits. Oh, just they didn't hide them. Just, no, just something else that we coined. You know, a mm -hmm. hashtag hide your recruits. Anyway, so yeah. Yeah, what a day. What a day. What a day. What a the day song. that we all uh, thought would we'd, we'd be right. happening when that plane landed. This is what the this is what we were dreaming of. We're like, oh my god, we're gonna have days like this where we're legit battling Georgia and Alabama for top of class supremacy. Yeah, yeah. I I, I spoke to um, somebody earlier who who had said, you know, this is this was the type of this is why you hired the guy, right? We know we and we've said this at nauseum. Really, this is why you hired the guy, <laughs> but it's turned out. It's turned out better. It's turned out better in that regard, quicker in that regard than even he anticipated. And it's talent acquisition, man. It's talent acquisition at any business, any level of any corporate world. They're in the corporate world of NCAA football, and it all revolves around talent acquisition. And when you're, I know Roe has been on the blue chip ratio and we've done less with more for many, 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 many years, but we have not consistently, and it's only two full cycles, not consistently had this type of talent to where it's top three for consecutive and multiple consecutive terms, if you will. That changes things, I believe. I believe it changes things because then you're not in a position where a, a lack of a kneel costs you a game, to be quite honest with you. It's because, it, man, this is fun. This is fun. And, and it ain't done. And that's the scary mm -hmm. part. The scary part is this may not be over yet. I may be over by the time you hear this, considering this is taped uh, Wednesday evening. But as of right now, it's not over yet. And we're still waiting on QB1 as well. Yeah, so right now, as of taping, Miami has the number three composite class on 24-7, number one class in the ACC. Um, the top recruit is Justin Scott. Um, obviously there is a whole lot of drama going on with a local individual, um, Jeremiah Smith, who had his signing ceremony and put on the Buckeye hat and seemed to sign something, but apparently never faxed said something in and come five o'clock in the afternoon, all of a sudden Ohio State, it's like, yeah, we don't got nothing. <laughs> Did you see the and video? No what's going on. Oh, Did the video of Ryan Day when they right, said that see he it? Had, just the relief, like, yeah. I, right, but then did you see the, the, the second part of that video? Oh, I did not know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh. and I, I tweeted it out. I, I clipped it, and I tweeted it out from the OBB account. The second part of that video is, did he, did he, did you get the papers? Did you send, did he send the papers in? And they were like, no, we don't have them yet. He's like, okay, well, I, I can't say anything because I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, no, no, right, no, yeah, no, I saw that. Yeah, I see, I saw, yeah, yeah. And, and you didn't think anything of it. No, because that's just that's right when he signed or that's right when he announced. So obviously probably didn't have the papers yet. That's right when he announced. But you thought nothing of it. And then four hours later, you're like, <laughs> four hours later. Well, well, well and, then, and then I think it was uh, it might have been Susan 
Someone, one of the reporters tweeted out that according to Jeremiah, he had two bag, uh, two hats in his bag. Two hats. Yeah, Ohio yeah. State Man, and Miami. Miami. Yeah. And he just went with, uh, you know, Ohio State because of the, the pipeline to the NFL, yada, yada, totally acceptable. Boom. But we all just assumed that it was, it was a tough deal. Like, and the fact that it, it still isn't is just fascinating. Still I mean, isn't. Feel, Let me check. Oh. You guys yeah, I, talk for a second. I'm yeah. going to check. No, I love checking. Check. This is F5 season. I'm doing the this, same thing. This right? is F5 check. day. We're going to, as as this is going on, we're going to constantly update this. Now, you said something that's near and dear to my heart, the blue chip ratio. And, and you're going to listen to some A-plus spin doctory right now. Because <laughs> do you know that the University of Miami has the third-ranked composite class in the country? And they're less than 50% in terms of a blue chip ratio. They're actually less. They have more three stars than they do four stars and five stars. And I'm totally okay with it because I am too, but, 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 but here's, but here's where I'm starting to morph and evolve. And it, and it uh, happened to happen. Well, it happened because of, by the way, cheers. Um, cheers. It happened because of the Texas A&M class and seeing the Georgias and the Alabama stack those blue chip ratio classes so much so. When you're talking about talent acquisition, I'm okay with a lot of the three stars as long as you're, you're telling me you got a top five class and you're less than the 50% blue chip magic number. But in today's NIL market, think about Texas A&M, the Georgias. How many five stars go out in the portal the very next year, right? All these guys are gone. You can't keep those classes together. We talked about this last episode, the, the NIL money to get them, but then the NIL money to keep them. So in terms of an NFL roster, right, you got your stars that can help you win, but you're going to have to have other guys that help you fit the salary cap, <laughs> you know? So to me, I'm like, oh, I actually like the fact that they have the three stars because, listen, they got their, they got their five-star talent, and I have a fun question for us later. They got their five-star talent along the defensive line. Defensive line is going to be best in the country. But I actually don't mind the fact that they have three stars, and I know that's coming from me, and that's my spin doctorate. That's that's I, I'm 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 doing a complete 180 backflip. But I think because in NL market, you got to really look at it in parts and think about not just that year when you sign them. How good are they if you sign all these five stars? They don't play, and they're in the portal the next year. So I think Miami might be on the right track here. Give me top five all day classes looking like this. We'll see what happens in two years. How many of these kids are still on the roster? I think my Miami has a better shot of keeping them than what we've seen out of the Georgias and Alabamas and Texas A and M's. Dude, you are spot Thanks. on with that. One hundred percent. I think I couldn't agree with you more. The last thing you want to do is be in a position where you become Texas A and M two point mm -hmm. and these guys are all hopping into the portal next year. Uh, mm -hmm. The last thing that you want, um, and also when you in you listen to the people who claim to know in terms of, you know, blue scene and all those guys with uh, talent. And you look at some of these three stars that they had. And remember, Cam was a three star. But uh, as far as I can tell, Plaz should have been a four. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's, an, he's, he's just a stud. Also, Cole McConathy should have been a four. Mm -hmm. Just uh, and and then you got someone like um, if they say if what they say is true. We brought in the transfer from Indiana to take over for Matt Lee. But apparently, Nico Frank of uh, Villa, I believe it is, mm -hmm. is like the center of the future. So, like the guy that you think might be here for Mike and start for like two or three years. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So you want to, you need to have some of those guys. You have to develop, man. You can't afford five stars and four stars all the time. Yeah, you're gonna have the developmental guys, your three star guys, and stuff like that. Maybe you just, you know, they're gonna work, they're gonna get better, they're gonna develop, and then those are gonna be your guys that you can roll into the roster in the future. I just. It, I almost think you got to look at it in terms of salary cap now, right? The three stars are going to get you in under your salary cap because the fours and fives, oh my goodness. They want they they want money. It just it just is what it is. So, I got a question. And there and there's a pattern. Last year the strength of our class was our offensive line. That's where our blue chip guys, right? We ended up getting Pancake, we got Maui Noah. Now, when you flip it, our Blue chips like the two the two top Justin Scott and Armando Blount, who by the way flip flip. That's a rare feat, by the way. He flipped from us to flip back. Usually you, you don't see that, right? That's a rare flip to flip. But Mary flip miss Mario and Cristobal. to sting FSU in the process is just you know the 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 the, the nice ornament on the tree. So my question: <laughs> What is the better 
line offensive line that we signed last year or the defensive line that we signed this year? It's the defensive line you signed this year. I think the defensive line this year is, I mean, it's probably the best single defensive line class that we've ever signed. Um, And yes, you sign Maui Noah and you sign Pancake. Does that include transfers? You sign Matt Lean, you sign Cohen. So, uh, man, I, I'm still going with D line. It's really close, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, because Maui Noah is a potential first rounder in the future. Correct. We know that. Correct. Pancake's so going to be a stud, too. Yeah. Right. I, man, I don't know. All I know is in two cycles, he's transformed the trenches. So, let me go a, a step deeper on this for you in two years what has he made deeper better overall in the trenches offense or defensive line i i i I think it's defense and the reason why i think it's defense is because the addition of jason taylor I know we give Mario a lot of credit. We give Mario a lot of credit. Now, this is going back two seasons when like, J- or, or when Jason was kind of like first announced, and he really wasn't recruiting yet because Mario just got here, and it was just like, what what is Jason Taylor going to do? Because I know he has a gold jacket. I know he's a stud of a player, but I heard back then he's your best recruiter. Like Mario's Mario. He's in a class of his own. I'm going to give him an accolade later. But like Jason Taylor is like, that guy walks in and, and, you know, bravo, Jason, because I just saw something and I don't know if you heard the story or you saw what he does, but, you know, he writes the initials like on a lot of his notes and like like notepads and everything. A lot of his a lot of his, you know, paperwork that he has. He writes S.E.S. on all the top of his paperwork. Do you know what S.E.S. stands for? No. Oh, you didn't hear this. Nope. It stands for someone else's son. So every time Jason recruits one of these kids, he just reminds himself every single time this is someone else's son. So he has this way to connect with the kid, and obviously he has the acumen, he has the pedigree, right? He has the history. So I I think I'm going to give it to the defensive side of the ball and the defensive line because I think when you add Mario, but then you add Jason Taylor, I think that's why you saw this class because we talked about Armando Blount. He's up there. Justin Scott, those are your two top recruits, but – then Marquise Light, Lightfoot, he's he, he's three out of four. Three out of your top four recruits are along the defensive line. They're studly. They're beasts. So that's my answer. Defense. I agree with you. I top to bottom. I think the defensive line is now is cha- defensive line top to bottom is championship level. They're they're on par with the other two teams in front of them. Like that defensive line, offensive line. They they are. He's fixed the trenches in two years. That's exact. It's a, there's yes, they are going to be able to go anywhere that they did it in parts last year, guys. You know this is true. Their offensive line traveled. We were able to run the ball for 175 a clip, give or take a yard. No matter our offensive line finally got to the part where we're like our 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 woes was not because of our offensive line. Defensive line with the emergence of of Bain, my goodness, and it's just adding and adding and adding. My goodness, it's stacked. Stack. I'll what go you- just I'm just I'll, I'll go the flip opposite because everyone agreeing would just be lame as shit um cool. listen he's an offensive line guy um and I and I'll be honest with you I think we've had there's been times where we've had decent defensive lines over the the number of years but he the culture change we've seen on the off we haven't seen an offensive line like this guy's in 20 years like it, it's been that long since That's we true. had an offensive line like this. We had we've had spurts. I mean, the Gerald Willis line had had a really good season. Like there's been spurts here and there, but from just an overall, I'll go offensive line just because we haven't seen this from that in a lifetime for some people. It's been twenty years. I got another question for you. Because we're the Orange Bowl boys, and we have a lot more fun than a lot of other pods. And you're going to hear all this, you know, breakdowns of recruits and this. And all, you know, we're going to do a little bit. If this recruiting class was a was a vehicle, mm. make and model a vehicle. What make and model vehicle is this? Is this recruiting class? Second, I have to look. I gotta think about this for a second. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. We may have to, we may have to do a little editing, a little, little edit out of here. Uh, if this takes too long, hang on. Let me. Uh... (laughs) 
I'll go first. Okay. I'm going to say it's the Tesla Cybertruck. All right? But mm -hmm. hear me out. Because Mario's always been this guy where he's like, oh, you got to build it in the trenches, brother. So I immediately think of like this, this, this Ford F-150, right? This just, yeah, it's going to, it's going to pull in the mud, brother, right? But then right after you see the defensive line and the F-150 emerge, right? When you have the defensive line and you do it, the next guys that are highest up in this class, Carr, Trader, and Robinson, what position are they at? Yes, wide receiver you. We've been talking about this. So now I'm like, oh, it's a it's a very fast truck. It's it's <laughs> it's not just a truck. It's it's something cool, right? It's not just about the trenches, brother, because you need to match the trenches with the playmakers. And th that's my answer. I, I I think it's I think it's the Tesla Cybertruck. All right. I, I was I was there with you before you said Tesla Tesla Cybertruck is me. I'm looking at a 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor four wheel drive. Yes, Super that Crew, was bro. Good. I'm that's a the Raptor. black fucking out, bro. That's the goddamn. <laughs> that's the fucking car that it is. That is it. It's a vehicle. That is it. <laughs> See, and I was that was that was choice two for me because I was like, yeah, it's got to be a really fast ass truck because yes. we got some playmakers. It's a it's a it's a Raptor. You bro, know? I saw that cyber Tesla truck couldn't even go up a hill getting a Christmas tree, bro. Stop that. Give me the Raptor. No, I, I saw that thing. That thing's, I was in Scoopy's Tesla. That thing's fast as balls, dude. It was like launched in a plane. <laughs> it is uncomfortably fast, yeah. Um. All right. I'm going to go in that kind of direction. Bit of a different uh, mode here. And it costs quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm going in a Bugatti. Ooh. Whoa. There's levels. Scoop went up a few levels. Because the Bugatti is a big ass beast of a car. Yeah. Heavy as fuck. But so what model are we looking at here? Because I'm at the Bugatti the... website. What what model are we looking at here? Uh like a Veyron, maybe. The fact that you even know this is impressive. Yeah. Yeah, so that there works. Go. I'm All going right. there. I'm going there. Because, yeah. because you do have the skill guys. So it's it's a, it's not the fastest production car. Uh, top end, it might be. Top end, 200 and 10 miles an hour. I'm there. I'm there. That, this is a Bugatti okay. class. All right. All right. I, I, I have something that I want to bring up. You're going to see the commonality real quick, but I'm going to give you four names and try to feed, what is the commonality of the names that I'm about to give you? Because to me, this is like an underlying storyline within the class, right? Not the big headlines, but this is a, this is a monumental storyline for me. Chance Robinson, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Jordan Lyle, that's number two. Mm -hmm. Frederic, yep, and Ryan Mack. What is the commonality of those? When's four the names? last time that happened? All four dudes from St. Thomas Aquinas. Let's go. Yeah. When's the last time we got four guys <laughs> in the same class from there? Now I want to I want to bring you in because I was on a conference call with the new athletic director. Obviously, he's he's got some skills. Took over for George. And I said, listen, I'm like, I know for a fact that, you know, St. Thomas, we're, we're not a feeder school, right? We're, we're not a feeder school at all. We've, we've, since George was there and I know you took, you took over and like, there's just no way that we're going to be, we're ever going to be a pipeline. All right. And that, that's not quite true. They were a pipeline of sorts. And just not here. Tuan Russell is the new athletic director uh -huh. for mm -hmm. those who played at the University of Miami. He goes, no, I, I disagree. The University of Miami can have a pipeline back in St. Thomas, and I encourage it. And I was like, ooh, ooh, okay. I still don't think that's – it's a it, it was a pipeline. I mean, we got four ballers from my alma mater. And as like Scoop just said, that's like a, a hidden storyline, but a very pivotal one because when has that happened? 
Yeah. To see the to see the four of them at the table throwing up the O is like that's that's a that's a shift. Mm-hmm. That's Huge a shift. shift that you don't necessarily see very often. And the reality is you got two out of four from Chaminade. You've mm-hmm. got a five star safety. You've got a four slash five star in JoJo Trader. And the other dude's not it's not finished yet. So if you get three out of those four, I will tell you this. If that young man decides to come to Miami, <laughs> Miami Twitter is going to be fucking unbearable. It's going to be fucking great. <laughs> well, so let's, well, so let's talk about this. So obviously, one would think, right? Obviously, we know that there's money involved to whatever extent. Just remove that for a second. You would have to think just putting numbers together and just thinking logically that maybe if we get a certain quarterback that sways a decision. I mean, is that well, something that maybe is being, I, is, is I, out there right I, now? Like, I don't know, like, cause we still don't have a quarterback guys. Like all this has happened is all great, but we've been waiting like for like a week. And oh, we got a quarterback. a quarterback. We we did get a quarterback, but yeah, we don't have a quarterback right. that perceivably is going to start next year. Right. So, so, so like, while all this is also like, that's the one thing that, Still, we're it's still been going on for at least a week or ten days, right? Um, you know, so if, and if this is the way it works in the NIL world, then the go, I, I don't know, man. But I, maybe look, that's... I think I think we're every day we're closer. Um, so me saying this really doesn't hold any weight. Uh, I I think we're close. I think we're pretty close on, um, on a QB one, right? Or somebody who you would, if you if you get him from the portal you would consider him QB1 if there was no competition that would be your guy um does that play a role I don't know because I don't know if that is close enough to where you can tell JJ that yeah that's done and secondly I don't that's not a as a recruiter and we talk about this quite a bit on it's Recruiting's not that hard, right? I mean, it's the spin, I would say. The spin, the 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 work that goes into it is, is exhausting. But the spins are not terribly difficult. And I don't believe that Mario would sell. This is my opinion, speculative scoop. I don't believe Mario would sell the chance to stay home and make Miami, Miami on whether or not a certain quarterback was going to come for a single season. I think it's more about what he can do, the legend that he can make in his hometown. So does the quarterback factor in? Eh, I'm not necessarily sure because it's one season. It's not a career. So my take. He's recruiting off of a seven and five and five and seven season. He's got the third ranked recruiting class. I I think he's senior spin. That's right. <laughs> I, I think his recruiting game. The the tag that I wanted to give him, and I ju- I just said what he's doing it off the backs of because this is what's. Regardless, the other state schools are are just took a kick to the nuts. That was fun. That was fun to watch today. <laughs> And the reason being is you're Florida State. You just went undefeated. You took the ultimate, you know, cup check when the playoff committee said you're not good enough to get in. And then you lose both of your five stars, one to us, by the way, and then one to Georgia, <laughs> who you're about to play. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't give that guy too many trade secrets. Florida's just in a in a, in a thing to itself. Florida State's got to like, what do we have to do? I mean, we lose our fight. I mean, we just went undefeated. You would think that kind of a streak would just lead to auto. And in their minds and in their hearts, I know for a fact, we're going to out recruit Mario. There's no doubt. We're going to out. We beat them. They were seven and five. They're trash. And that's not what happened. Right. And if we get this late signee, it's not even going to come close to happen. But here's what the rivals got to realize. Nick Saban said that Mario Cristobal was like the best recruiter he has ever been around. Okay. And I'm going to tell you after seeing a seven and five and five and seven season, and for him to recruit the way he recruits, 
He is the Nick Saban of recruiting. Give him that mantle. He's earned it. He did it at Oregon. He's doing it here. He's doing it even at a higher level here than he did at Oregon. That man was bred to recruit. That's his pedigree. That's what he does. That is like playing. Here's why it just cemented in my brain. This was simple for me. Like when you play a playoff game, you don't want to be against Nick Saban in a playoff game. You just don't want it. You don't want one of his Alabama teams playing off against you. You would rather avoid it at all costs. And when it comes down close to National Signing Day, you don't want to be against Mario Cristobal in like fashion. So I'm telling you, Mario Cristobal is the Nick Saban of recruiting. And you want to avoid him at all costs. And Florida State, you just learned it the hard way. He was that when he wasn't here. And two years ago, we said, it's going to mean more to him. This means more to him. So if you think he was good at selling these kids on getting them to come play for him at the schools where he was that didn't have a U on the chest, and then he comes here where it means everything to him, you're 100% right. He's the best in the game at it. He is. He 100% is. And if he wins, untouchable. If he wins, he's untouchable in that regard. The only reason Ohio State, Bama, and Georgia are in that top five every single year is because they win. That's it. Because I promise you, Ryan Day is not a great recruiter. The dude paints a beard on his face. Like, that dude's not recruiting to the top level, okay? <laughs> Saban, he wins. He's a great spokesman. Of course, he's going to recruit well. He just told you that Mario's better than I am. And Kirby Smart, he's won two in a row. I mean, it, the winning will breed that success in the recruiting grounds like they have had. If Mario starts to win here, fucking forget about it. I'm telling you, forget about it. It all starts with talent acquisition. Well, I, I so said one of my storylines was the four St. Thomas guys. Do you guys have any storylines that stood out to you with this recruiting class? Well, I think my biggest storyline was what Scoop just, Scoop just alludes, and even you guys, that this is all being done off a of five and seven, a seven and five record, and a losing record in the ACC, mind you. Mm -hmm. um, and that is just insane. That is just, it's it's unprecedented, really. I don't think we've seen, I mean, I mean, between this and the portal classes, I mean, everything's been, what, the worst has been, what, seven? Yeah. I think. <laughs> it's just, so, um, but then that brings up the other question, you know, this is the year, right, that it translates onto the field. I'm feeling much more confident, but yeah, we could talk about that. Scoopy, any, any storylines? Oh, man. I honestly, I got to pick something else because the St. Thomas photo really hit me. Um, yeah, I'll give you a storyline. We had one flip. And we knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. We knew that Riley was was going to go to Bama. We everybody knew that it was OK. Um, we didn't lose anybody. And. Everybody signed early. Everything was done by noon. The only one you had was Blount at six o'clock, and we kind of had... knew, and we kind of knew where that was going, right? Oh, and 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 um, uh, the kid from uh, that flipped from from Florida, the linebacker. So that's the storyline to me is this solid as shit, right? There's no, there's just no doubt about it. And I then you have a guy, says. and then you and then you have a guy who says he's going to Ohio State, he's the number one generational player in the history of recruiting. And they still don't let him sign his letter of intent. Like, they were, where were they? Where was KB? Was he in the parking lot? Yeah. Was he standing in front of the fax machine? <laughs> like, how, how did that all go down? I don't know how that all went down. Alex Collins' mama stole his LOI. Oh, That's what Alex <laughs> Collins. Rest in peace, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Scoop. 
Right. That was a moment. That was a moment. That was a, I still still the best best to this day. I've never Possibly, been so yeah. You got some gray life. in your beard if you're bringing out that reference. You yeah. old recruit next know exactly what we're talking about. He yeah, wanted yeah, to go to yeah. Catfish Hole. <laughs> he did. Oh, he did. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah. What, what are you thinking? I don't, I don't know. know. This is fun. I, I say we take. Uh, I say we take a quick break, and then we can come back. And we got to talk about. You know what? 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 What does this mean for on field? Where do we go from here? Uh, we also got to talk about the three transfers that have come in, kind of break down where they fit in immediately because those guys and one of them was much, much needed in uh, the kid from Vanderbilt. So uh, let's take a quick break. Going to talk about our people as always. Uh, Scoop's got one of them on his head right now, edmorse.com. Ed Morse family of dealerships, also Teddy Morse Harley Davidson. Got the flagship uh, Harley Davidson shop in Daytona Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. Wonderful uh, road trip mm -hmm. up there to check that out. Get yourself some gear, some swag. Buy yourself a uh, a fat boy. Why the hell not? Celebrate uh, an amazing recruiting class. Get it all decked out with the uh, University of Miami, you know, orange and all that. Be beautiful. An orange yeah. hog. An orange hog with some, like, green trim. Yeah. yeah. Speaking, green speaking tassels. Of, I want tassels. Tassels, tassels absolutely. Tassels. And, green like, uh, some, yeah, some cool, uh, can you get, like, orange or green saddlebags? Sure. Yeah, can you, can you? Yeah, okay. Get whatever I you don't, want. I don't, I don't know. Want hard just... cases. I don't want hard cases. I want saddlebags. Saddlebags, yeah. Nice leather. What, what you said, tassels, for some reason, because I just have a squirrel brain, I immediately <laughs> thought of the name Matt Tasselback. Matt Tasselback. That's a good one. <laughs> really? <laughs> like tassels. <laughs> Go ahead and check out our people, man. Edmorris.com. Price protection promise. Make sure you tell them the Orange Bull Boys sent you. <laughs> Dot com. And you said trim. And it's cold, and you need to trim your boys. The Performance Package 5.0 by Manscaped. It's not too late. Christmas is around the corner. Happy holidays. Promo code OBB. Get 20% off. It is the perfect gift for the holidays. Trim them up. You had to trim your tree? Trim your boys. Okay? Performance Package 5.0. Comes with a lot of cool stuff, even a free bag. Ho, ho, ho. Santa sent it. Manscaped. Now we talked about the package. It's bowl season, baby. It is bowl season. Uh, been doing well in those bowls. Have you seen the parlays? More parlays. I have seen. Yep. More parlays. So if parlays you get the packages, the packages, the packages, the mm -hmm. packages. Uh, he's got NHL parlays. He's got soccer parlays. He's got his. Uh, he's putting out his uh, basketball parlays mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. So if you don't follow him, follow him on Twitter for God's sake. At beating the bookie, he's set giving notifications. Him, yeah, set notifications. He's giving them. He's giving them to yeah. you. Yeah, he's you don't even pay for. It. He's just putting mm -hmm. them on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He said a couple of those. He said some NHL stuff. I mean, you could literally not do anything, make some of that. But what you want to do is take those winnings, get into the packages on the site, and continue to roll it out. That way your units go from $10 to $25 to $50 to $100. And then you start making some real money. So mm -hmm. at beatingthebookie.com is where you get those packages. And uh, follow them everywhere. Everywhere you have your social media. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I think that's it. At beating the bookie. You know, you, you know what you need on this recruiting class? You know, they talk about the cherry on top. No, you need a roof on top. And you don't want a leaky roof. So the best roof you can have is a non-leaky roof. You take this beautiful, pristine roof. You put it over this National Signing Day class. And there's only one person to make sure your roof is pristine and ready to go. And that's Paul Bange Roofing. Hi, I'm Paul. Give me a call. Give me a call. It's the easiest number. We're going to make this so viral. Everybody's going to know this number. It's 981 Roof. That's it. 981 Roof. Bang, bang, because it is a go route, a post route, and an out route. Roof, 561-954-305. Huge Hurricane fans. I promise you, when they saw this class, and they pretty much knew where this class was going, they're some pretty in-tune guys. They jumped through the roof. They had to fix their own roof. Thank God they have the expertise to do it. And now you can have their expertise as well. South Florida staple for years and years and years. Paul Bain's roofing. Give him a call. Hey, I'm Paul. Give me a call. 561-305-954-981-ROOF. 981-ROOF.
Really? I do want to before we before we head down and talk about some other stuff. I do want to kind of tease a little bit. Um, the boys, us being the boys. Uh, I was thinking my balls. So I was like, no, oh, well, gonna... those two, those two, <laughs> they can be. You know, they can be involved. <laughs> Okay. They'd like to be. Uh, we have a major announcement for the start of the new year. That's all. Okay. Oh, and Rose balls are involved. Yep. Okay, cool. See, now I'm lost. That's the first I time they've been knew, involved. I, I thought I, I knew know what it was. I, know, be, I have no now, idea why his balls yeah. are involved. He threw Neither it into the I. mix. Okay. But we have a major announcement <laughs> for the start of the new year. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. Look forward Very to exciting. that. Very Let exciting. Him cook. To that. Let him cook. Let him cook. Yeah, that's right. Mario was cooking. We're cooking too. All right, Toasty. boys. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about this class. Um, I'm intrigued by what we've added to the wide receiver room and where these uh, three gentlemen are going to kind of slide in with uh, Carr, Trader, and Robinson. Um, also kind of intrigued when you look at uh, Zach Carpenter, linebacker. Or I'm sorry, I'm an offensive lineman at the center, taking over for Matt Lee and uh, mm -hmm. C.J. Clark uh, coming in also from NC State, defensive line. And as we said, Savion Riley, huge guys. Stay safety from Vanderbilt, I think, what, two or three years of eligibility left? That was a room that desperately needed some bodies. Mm -hmm. y you so know who, who's – all right, so it's, speaking about it, so so you're talking about that. You're so of the freshmen, of the guys who signed today, mm -hmm. of the guys who signed today, Give me your top offensive and top defensive contributor for next year Ooh, as a true freshman. Day one? Day one. As a true two. freshman for the season. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm, um, for the season. I just think it's mm. easy to go with Justin Scott. He's your highest recruit on a board in a position of need, right? You just lost Leonard Taylor. Uh, so he – and here's the thing. Most freshmen, you're like, oh, well, he's going to have to put some weight on. He's 6'4", 3'10". So he, he's already at a pretty good size. So I see Justin Scott being the offensive contributor. Uh, I mean, the deep, sorry, excuse me, the defense contrib contributor. On the offensive side of the ball, oof. Oof. I don't know. Probably one of the, I, one of the wide receivers. I think one of those wide receivers are going to get some looks. They're going to get some touches. Obviously, we lost our number three wide receiver. So somebody can come in and potentially be number two and three. And here's the thing. We love Xavier. Xavier, for all intents and purposes, is going to stick around. Uh, I don't think we anticipate him going into the portal, but he might not have the same season he had a year ago because Tyler's not here. So mm, take your pick. Take your pick. Let me go Chance Robinson because he's a St. Thomas kid. All right, Homer. Those are my picks. Uh, I am uh... – well, so, all right, so when it comes to the defensive side, I think Zaquan, because I think he's going to have a chance to be on the field immediately. I also go along with Justin Scott, and I would also say uh, Savion Rod. Those are the three new names that you're going to see the most early on. Um, I think on the offensive side, I think the uh, the biggest impact that you're going to see is actually the transfer is going to be Zach Carpenter because he's the new face that's going to be running that offensive line, making those calls. Um, when it comes to the wide receivers, I listen, I love all three of these guys, but man, I got a feeling that Burchard's just chomping at the bit, bro. And I just don't know that anyone's beating him out for one of those spots. Um, Jacoby also. So I just, I think there's some depth there and it's going to be very competitive. Obviously there's uh, injuries and this and that, but that room just seems, there's a lot of depth in there right now. And I'm just not sure how much run any of those three guys are going to get year one. I'm just not I, – I, I wouldn't bet on a lot. One of the reasons why I chance, too, because the receiver that you're looking at all intents and purposes, I think he's going to Georgia. Mm -hmm. But Chance is the tallest of the three. Of uh, You know, Jacoby is not necessarily your biggest body guy, but Chance is 190, so maybe has the capability of putting another 10 pounds on him. So, like, you know, almost around 6'2", 200 pounds. You know, you don't have that six four, six six guy right now on the roster, you know, as far as the incoming freshmen are concerned. But they're definitely playmakers, so uh, I, I definitely can see it. Now, our wide receiver board could change, and that, and then obviously I'll tell you who my <laughs> who my offensive pick would be if that was and, the case. But And before you go, Scoop, I would just say that you're almost getting to the point, guys, where for an incoming true freshman to – get a lot of playing time early on a roster like this, like you got to be pretty special. You're going to have to be pretty special. Like it's getting to the point now where you've really got some talent at these positions. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think next year for sure. I think this year the freshmen can certainly come in and make an immediate impact, if they're good enough. I don't think they've got to be, you know, how they're going to have to be, right? I don't think you have to be a, uh, a, a, a Jeremiah Smith or somebody similar to that to be able to come in this year and make an impact. Um, my two guys... Uh, I was going just with true freshmen from this incoming class. I would have to agree with you, probably the center uh, and a couple of the portal guys, but that wasn't necessarily what I was going as far as my thought process. Um, Zaquan Patterson for me, I think is a, is a, is a kid who's going to come in and be able to, he is, man, he reminds me a lot of cam. Um, He's a ball hawk. He just makes plays. Uh, He's aggressive but he's a leader though. I mean, you heard Mario talk about him uh, in that, in in that presser today um, and his ability to lead vocally, verbally um, and have guys in the right spot, uh, even on the sidelines. I think he's going to, he's going to have a major impact. I do believe he's going to have a major impact right away. Um, And offensively, I'm going to give you something that's going to surprise you. I think Elijah Lofton is an absolute nightmare. For defenses um he is a swiss army knife tight end running back wide receiver it doesn't matter where the fuck you put him he's he's uh who's that dude from fsu six who's that guy yeah Who, six. Can never oh, remember yeah. His name? yeah yeah uh-huh. yeah, six. yeah it's called six yeah. bell call him bell. nightmare yeah bell that that dude that's that's elijah lofton he is he is he's going to be a nightmare and i think they're going to utilize him um Certainly, if they can utilize him in the tight end position, that would be great. But he is a guy who you can use all over the field, and I think he's going to play right away. See, that was my kind of sleeper pick, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that as we transition to potential sleepers because I'm like, that that recruit kind of surprised me because the fact you were still able to hold on to him when you really underutilized that tight end position last year. So again, the fact, and we the got spin, another bro. bishop. It's the spin. We got another right. bishop Gorman tight end, right? Yeah. We, I know we had pipeline. success with Brevin Jordan. So Brevin was successful. Same went, type of mold. Yeah, six Same two 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 mold. six two two twenty. So he's not I think necessarily Lawson is better at that age. Yeah. So an H back coming in to potentially lead block, come in, kind of get him out there, potentially play some of that like fullback if you wanted to do some of that twenty one set personnel kind of look. Yeah. He could, he could kind of open things up. He's a little bit different mold than the tight ends we have. You know, last year was like your big, lengthy, long tight ends, right? When you had like Riley and stuff like that. You know, Royals like, you know, in the middle of those two. But Elijah is more scoops right. It's your Swiss Army knife. I was just shocked. I was like, oh, my God, we got a good tight end coming in, too. I mean, he never wavered either. Yeah, Like it was he, – he committed a long time ago, never wavered, stuck mm-hmm. with it. But that's the spin. That's that's what I'm saying. Like it – like. Well, our tight end room sucked because we didn't have you, right? I mean, you come in, you play. Number Mm -hmm, one in in, in Nevada. He's the number one player in Nevada, too. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, man, he is awesome. Go watch. Guys, I'm telling you this, guys and girls, whoever's listening, if you haven't watched his film, do yourself a favor. It's fucking awesome. Like, the kid is legit totally flew under the radar i have defensive defensive sleeper who you got i got a defensive sleeper talk talk to me who's your defense who you sleeper? got cole mcconathy oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah three star that should have been a four star bro he had 97 fucking sacks this year like he no seriously he had a lot, like a lot, a lot <laughs> in the state of Texas, like a lot, like a lot more than anyone else. Alabama, right? <laughs> Go watch his film. No, it's no. Un- it's amazing. Amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. He's, he's an edge player. He's an edge player. And I'm OK with it, too, because if Jason Taylor is, is is offering somebody, on, I'm OK with that. Just so, like I, I have trust on the offensive line side of the ball, which, by the way, um. We signed a dude from community college. Do you realize he's six eight and a half? Dude, yes, he's forty. It's, dude, Mark it's Bell. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The the offensive lineman. Yeah, McCarthy mm-hmm. is he's from the Alabama, tower so and the so. bell. He's the yeah, tower right. and the bell together. <laughs> he's like, my goodness, he's a redwood. He's the bell tower. He's <laughs> a redwood. <laughs> oh my goodness, size behemoth. behemoth. All right, so you guys made reference to it earlier. 
um, how impressive it was in this day and age. First of all, that we didn't see um, a bunch of guys go into the portal the day that it opened up on December 4th. And then all of a sudden that you also didn't see really any wavering at all from any of these commitments. Um, and Mario has been able to hold on to all of them. Now, obviously that is phenomenal, but at some point you got to think that the, the spin is going to have to make way for actual wins and losses on the field. So we now will have, you know, the three cycles, um, we're going into year number three, um, Obviously, we went from five and seven to seven and five. Way too early prediction, but I mean, there's one of these years has got to be the jump forward year, right? And, and it's get, really got to be this year, right? I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. With, uh, we need to find out who the quarterback is. That's got to be the right. dominant one. Now, the, now I, I will I will say this. Y you know, in terms in terms of like this being like the Big Bang Theory, you know what I'm saying? You you got to prove step one. Step one is going to be the quarterback, but all the steps, the subsequent steps after, like okay, who turned on the oven? All the steps from there make sense, right? All the dominoes that just fell place with having the, the a top five recruiting class. We currently sit at three. All the pieces that you just added this year, last year. You just need to get that quarterback, and if it is, I promise you, my prediction. I was seven and five last year. I hedged it with some percentage points, but I'm not going to do it. I think the way that they played last year, the way that the culture has it, it, you know, invigorated itself, I think we're going to learn on the offensive side of the ball. I think that last film, you just open it up a little bit. You add maybe a running element to the quarterback position, and I think with the talent that's getting there, like to me, you don't have to – if the talent – you keep stacking the talent as high as it's going, it's exponentially multiplying faster than how good we need to get on the offensive side of the ball. Meaning we just need to get like 10% better, 15% better on what we're doing on the offensive side of the ball as far as the play caller is concerned. But we're, we're getting like 50 times better as far as the talent acquisition side. So we – because the talent acquisition is so high, we don't have to go that crazy in terms of, you know – on the offensive side in terms of X's and O's. That's my opinion. So I'm looking for a good year next year. What's a good year? Like, give me a win number. Oh, I, I'm looking at at no. least nine wins. At least. Just, just no, we can, we'll do it. No, we're not going to hold you to let, this. Let's do this. Let's, this let's, is just, yeah. If if you get who I think we're going to get at quarterback position, I, I'm comfortable doing a 9-10 win season. I think Mario is still maddening enough that he's going to mm -hmm. – He's going to Clemson it for the we're, we're going to have to go through some Clemsoning years, right? Losing games inexplicably we're not supposed to lose, but I think it's going to keep correcting itself, correct, ratcheting it up, ratcheting it up. And eventually three, four, five years stacking this talent, similar to what Kirby has been able to do. I think eventually you're just, you're going to be able to put yourself in a situation. You get the right guy calling plays and the sky's the limit. So nine to 10 win season. If I think we're getting the quarterback that I think we're getting. I remember we had Rudy on here very soon after Mario was hired. And we had asked him, you know, what what's your thought as far as when do you think that this is going to be a good return on the investment? Tangible, right? And he gave us a four- to five-year window for us to be able to get to the playoffs. If Mario keeps this up, I certainly think that's viable. If what Roe is believing to be the case, the team has a chance. And I'm not getting, I mean, I'm drinking the fucking Kool-Aid. Don't kid yourself. I drink it every offseason. This one's no different. This one just has to have better talent. So I'm going to be drinking more buckets. If this has the chance, if we get the guy a quarterback and he pans out to be the missing key to what we needed, and a couple of these freshmen come in and really stand out. This team can win the ACC. This team can win the ACC. 100%. If you win the ACC, you're now in the 12-team playoff. Well, you'd like to think. That was four teams. This will be 12. You'd, you'd still, you'd like to I'm think. I'm just saying. <laughs> I believe that we might be a bit ahead of schedule based on yeah, yeah. what Rudy told us. Listen, my 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 thought is that um I'm looking I'm looking for nothing worse than nine and three this year. I'll throw it out there. That's that's where my mind is. That's where my mind is. And that is obviously assuming that you get the right guy 
under center. Um, but listen, the guy that everybody wants still out there. Hasn't committed anywhere else yet. Don't hear anything about him, like visiting other places either. So I don't know what's going on. But uh, but yeah. So if you, you but if you get the, if they get the guy that they want, then I think that that's what we that we, what we should be looking at, what we should be hoping for, and uh, kind of expecting. And then as your your right scoop, and then I think at that point, listen, it happens in football all the time. You gotta you, you gotta lose before you can win. But losing doesn't mean going like seven and five. Losing means you like you go ten and two, and you had a rough loss, and you learn from it. And the next year you go twelve and zero, like that sort of learning loss. Um, but I think this is the year that you take that jump, that we're no longer ever dealing with five hundred records again. You know what I'm saying? Like this seven and five was the last time that we're flirting with that shit with three games to go. It's it's. We talked about it when we mentioned TCU, Florida State. I don't know, right? You're losing Jordan Travis. I don't know what they're going to do. We're going to replace the quarterback position. They lost their five-star recruits late. He's better in the portal than he is necessarily in recruiting. That That's true. Since, since he's been here, he's not known. That's not his powerhouse, right? Runs a really good offense. I'm going to give him credit there too. But the way Mario's building it, it's more sustainable. It's more sustainable because those recruiting classes, right? Alabama, Georgia, Alabama, Georgia, 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 Alabama, Alabama, Alabama. He's done it. He's done it. That's your bedrock. Now, the portal is going to be your accentuating pieces. It's going to be necessity pieces. But you have to do it on the recruiting side, too. And you have to do it with, like, some umph, with some gusto because that is your bedrock. If you have that taken care of, and that's what you do year after year. Mario is who we know he is. Give him his crown. They are who we thought they were. And you're not letting Mario off the hook. You're not. He's going to keep recruiting. He's going to keep recruiting, and it's sustainable. That's what allowed Oregon to keep competing for, uh, you know, Pac-12, or a little out for our dead homie, for Pac-12 championships. Because that's how he did it. He did it with a bedrock of recruiting. That's sustainable. So, I feel comfortable too, boys, because you know he just made a bold prediction. Like, yeah, they could get in. The, I think they could win the ACC. I think they could get in the playoffs. I could see that happening if we get the quarterback that we think. Okay, but in in this situation, you know those inexplicable losses that would have kept you out of the four team playoff. It's not going to keep you out necessarily in a twelve team playoff, right? Realistically, Miami could win an ACC with three losses, right? That would put them at nine or ten and three. Right, because you play, you know that one S ten win season, ten and three ACC representative. You lost three. You have the ability to go in, and all bets are off. All bets are off. You get hot at the right time. You 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 know you're gonna eventually see a two three loss team win a national championship. That's what the twelve team playoff is going to allow you to do. So you can withstand a little bit of Clemsoning it. And for those that don't know that term, there was this Clemson was starting to build it up. Right, they were starting to build up their rise. And they would lose inexplicably to Syracuse. And they would knock them out because the SEC teams would just jump. But eventually they put it all together. They didn't Clemson it anymore. That moniker went away. We got a little Clemsoning buffer now, now that we have a 12 team playoff. Bro, a, a 10 and 3 ACC champion um, will get in after all of the one and two loss SEC teams and one loss Big Ten teams. Theoretically, theoretically, I'm just saying. I'm just saying they, they they could end up being like the 11 or 12 seed. Well, That's which is fine. fine. That, which well, is they got three losses. Gotcha. They ought to be a 12 seed. But the <laughs> right. reality yes. is, I don't. I don't. I, maybe I'm being a homer here. College football, college football had the chance to put Florida State back in the spotlight. I didn't do it. Hmm. I believe that college football, in the same breath, wants Miami back in that spotlight so damn bad. But ESPN does. Because We're good for college football. Of course yeah. it is. So there is that logo. And I'm again, I'm not trying to be a homer. I know Florida State fans think this is bullshit, and the Gator fans think that logo carries more weight if it comes to a situation like that. It's just the truth. It's just the way it is. Just live with it. You just said a comment, Toast, and then 
Scoop was talking. I want to see if I put two and two together and if you agree with this or not. Our logo carries more weight. But I almost think it's the combination of our logo and our city because we're a much bigger media market than both Gainesville and Tallahassee. Would you agree there that it's not only just the fact that we have a logo and it has this prestige and we won more national championships than Little Brothers, but it's the Miami media market. It's Miami. You get a a good Miami team that's in the playoffs potentially winning a national championship. We show out. It's just what we do. Would you agree? Yeah, it's just it's a city, man. It's a tandem deal. It's I don't know. Some of you may realize this. Some of you don't. Miami's become the hottest real estate market in the country for ultra luxury. All the companies are moving here. For Christ's sake, Bezos is buying blocks and blocks and blocks of real estate. Dude, Ken Griffin is just relocating along his with whole Ken company. Griffin. I yeah. know the two of the two of them are are <laughs> are, are, uh, are 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 cohorting. Yeah, cohorting cohorting mm-hmm. together to buy up all of of Miami. But it's Miami. It's it's just it's different, right? And you're you're absolutely right. I mean, I didn't go there with that, but that's the truth. It's the hottest city in the entire country for a multitude of reasons. It's But it, let's it's pioneer this accident. shit. Let's well, pioneer this shit right now because we've all we we say it, right? And it's kind of tongue in cheek. Our brand is better. Right? We say our brand is better. Right? And floors, oh, whatever, whatever. But you can't argue. Our brand and our city are better. It, right, when our brand not, meets our city, we trump Tallahassee and Gainesville. Shut the hell up. Right. But your, it's your not just, but, but it's not just because the brand in the city are better, which they are, but the brand in the city are also disdained by tons. And tons love to hate on the city and the brand. We're the and Lannisters, so baby. Exactly. So I mean, so it, it's a it's a it's a two edged thing here. So it, it's shame. You know, Miami and as a city and as a team are going up. More and more people despise Miami. Want to see it come down. So there's that hatred. So there's that attention. There's the clicks. There's the views. There's because you have people rooting. It's just it, it's it's a perfect cauldron, man. And it always has been. And that's what makes it special. And uh, we're about to see a resurgence of it because, man. Again, to those of you that are in your teens, in your 20s, in your 30s, you have no idea what it's like. The arrogance we all have when Miami's on top. (laughs) The city. The city. Oh, baby. The city's different. The city's different when Miami is Uh, a premier football team in the country. Josh Pate, OBB alumni, the microcosm, and he, he talked about it. He's like, 2017 Notre Dame was your microcosm, was your small glimpse what this city can be like when it's playing for meaningful games late in November and December. With playoff implications on the line, we are the hottest ticket. I promise you, Gainesville, you don't have Gloria Stefan <laughs> portrait, LeBron, A-Rod, all these people, Lil Wayne, name anybody you want to do, right? A-listers, are going to go ahead and check out that Miami game that night. That's not happening anywhere else. It's just different. It just is. Hold on a second. Hold on. You started that list with Gloria as Right? I know, because she's an alumni. Fuck, she went to old. that Notre Dame game. But you fucked up the whole... <laughs> By you, saying you, that. You, I know. You just ruined I, all of it. Oh, I know. I know. As soon as I said it, dude, I'm like, why did I, mean, I start with Gloria Stefan? Shit. LeBron, The Rock. <laughs> yeah, I could have went so many different places. But I went with Gloria <laughs> Stefan, Miami Sound Machine. I'm giving I'm giving homage. I'm paying homage to the queen, okay? Oh I'm gosh, giving homage to the, to the salsa queen. <laughs> Jesus, we, we, we have been building more. that for the last seven and a half minutes. It's you just, you just you. Poked the fucking needle right in the balloon with Gloria Stefan. You could have said Marcus Lamonison had a bigger hit. More relevant. All right. Oh, boy. All right. It's the thought that counts. Uh, yeah, it, yes, was, it, it, was, it was. It was. It was. Very nice. She is the queen. No doubt about it. And she doesn't do salsa either. No. She doesn't. Right, we saw it. You know, they did a Super Bowl halftime yeah. show. Yeah. Of course. Back in the day. Back in the day, of course. Yeah. Pitbull, Mr. 305, he'd be at that game. Mm-hmm. He's a little bit All right. relevant. Uh, so before we uh, get into some picks, um, wanted to <laughs> – this was just – my 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 uh, most enjoyed storyline from the recruiting season 
Um, last week or two weeks ago, uh, Deion Sanders made a huge splash getting the top rated offensive lineman to go ahead and commit to Colorado, <laughs> who then went on to skip bales and show and showed out, called out, Hey, if you're representing, why aren't you coming to Colorado? And now he's going to Maryland. Of all places too. <laughs> two weeks later, <laughs> Loxley flips him. <laughs> hey, you go back to the beginning. The one thing I said from the very rip, I think Dion's going to resonate with a lot of people. I, I really do. He's a good role model, too. He's, he's from a Miami fan. He could be ostentatious. He could be showy. He could be pompous. He could seem arrogant. But I think he's got good intentions. I think he can resonate a lot of people. My biggest concern was how he was going to do along the offensive lineman. You know, like the hog mollies in that position because that's not his pedigree, right? And and it's it's showing him. If you can't protect those the, your quarterback, if you can't protect the Travis Hunters of the world, what good is it going to get you? And it didn't get him a really great record. Flash in the pan, but until he gets – it's the opposite of what Miami's doing, right? Miami's building it from the inside out. Colorado, they're doing it from the outside in, and you see how it's going. So that's my concern. It was my concern when they first announced that guy. Mm. All right, should we do some uh, – I think they have like six or Ooh. seven high school recruits commits. Well, I don't know. He's trying to win now. Listen, let's 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 quickly uh, – what, what the – I mean – what the hell is going to happen in Florida with that schedule next year? I mean, now they did hold on to Ladway. They did. Um, but man, oh man, and they held on to McCray, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But that but, was it. Um, that was it. Everyone else. But everyone, everyone else flipped. Else got the hell out of Dodge. Everyone else flipped. Just two weeks flipped. ago. Two weeks ago, they were in the top five. As it yes. were number three. As it sits. As it sits, they're the number sixteen class in the country. They only have eighteen commits. I mean, that is an absolute tailspin. Yeah, there's no spin in that. We we mentioned it before, and he's like, he doesn't get enough props, but he's getting his props as it speaks because the number four recruiter in the country, Jason Taylor from the University of Miami, mm -hmm. as yeah. poor 24-7 composite. Bro, it's the best defensive line in the country. Oh, best defensive line class in the country. I mean, he is uh, building himself what is going to be a very nice coaching career here in the college ranks. I mean, he is going to go up the ladder quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he could be our DC in a few years. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, I don't you know, think Mario's going to let him too? leave. I don't think no. Mario's going to let him leave. <laughs> no, no, no. Mario, and I doubt that Jason really wants to until he gets a head coaching because he probably he's got to love it down here. This is home. Hopefully, he could be like uh, you know, like Bud Foster was. Just never want. He's just not right. like yeah. being a defensive yeah, line coach. And, yeah, just yeah, no. I like it's my hometown. Move on eventually, well, that'd be great yeah, to move. But at move some Taylor point, up. though, the you know Akron will back up a truck for him. Yeah. Akron, stop it! That's where I we get right. I That's think we could. I not think moving could, back to Akron. Well, I think for a head we could pay job, him. You never know. I no, think stop. we could pay Jason Taylor more than <laughs> Akron could pay him you as an hot head coach. So. Yeah, you yeah. Would hope so. like moving back to Akron. Oh my sake. goodness! Yeah, those are good problems to have five years from now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So, so um, bowl games. The only good bowl games really start next week. Um, but we're going to do. How'd we do? Huh? Yeah, how'd we do? I don't know. How did we do? Uh, you guys were all three and two. You picked six, but the Syracuse-South Florida game is not till tomorrow. All oh, right. there you go. Okay, so, we did pick that game. All yeah. right. Go Bulls. Yeah, so, I mean, listen, there's a bunch of games on Saturday, but none of them really. I mean, it's the – I'll name off a bowl. You tell me just by the bowl name if you want to do the picks, okay? We'll do it that way. Okay. Without telling you what, what teams are in it. First op option, the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl. Sure, let's do it. That is actually a good one. Georgia it's the, Tech is it in the pirate ship. It's in the pirate ship. Yeah, Raymond James. There you go. Yes, Georgia Tech versus UCF. This is going to be UCF is giving five and a half. Couldn't even tell you who's it's, Georgia it's, Tech. I see. Here's man. This is really interesting now because you you've got all these games that you're betting with all these lines. You, you don't even know who's playing. No, you don't. Half nope. the team's sitting out. Mm -hmm. Nobody's got a starting quarterback. I'm going Georgia Tech. Me too. Conference pride. UCF. All right. Screw conference pride. What is this, the SEC? <laughs> Get the hell out of here. All right. We've got uh, the 76 Birmingham Bowl. We've got the uh, Camellia Bowl. The what? How about the, the, the Camellia Bowl? Sure. That sounds horrible too. Okay. 
This is uh, happening in Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Jesus. Arkansas State at Northern Illinois. This is Saturday no, at noon. Arkansas State's given three. Okay. What are they? Aggies? I think so. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think he nailed it. They're, that's the team that beat uh that beat they beat Auburn. Mm-hmm. I'm taking Northern Illinois because they're the Huskies. I'm gonna yeah, take Arkansas State. Huskies. I'm gonna take the team that beat Auburn. Me okay. Too. Me too. All right. Go Aggies. Um Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Yeah, 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 All yeah, right. yeah. This will be a this is James Madison against Air Force. Ooh. James Madison was actually ranked. Yeah, Air Force was undefeated for most of the yeah. Uh, James Madison giving two. So yeah, you've got an eleven and one team and an eight and four team here. JMU giving two. You know the the Jets might suck in the NFL, but the people who learn to fly those Jets are good. Give me Air Force. I'm gonna take James Madison. Yeah, you know, so James Madison's QB is in the portal. Okay, so go ahead and take Air Force. <laughs> or he signed somewhere, I think. Oh, he did he? Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Uh, so I'm not James Madison. I'm, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna go JMU. Okay. Uh we got the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Yes. Oh, gee, you can't say yes to all of them, bro. How many they're are good, there? They're good, they're good names. Of them, bro. I don't want to shit, but we're doing no, like I five. Wanna, I don't care. It's, one just, more game. No, no, then we're done. We're going to jump to some actual games. Let's go. Fall right. asleep. Next Wednesday, the Direct TV Holiday Bowl. Louisville, USC. Oh, okay. There we okay. go. You couldn't Louisville have just gone there to be giving, giving seven and a half. Yeah, USC. No Caleb Williams. Garbage yeah, team. Care. Yeah. Think about that. Lincoln Riley mm -hmm. gave him half the city, had a good year, and then just went seven and five with a Heisman quarterback, and their team is dog shit. And they've got, what's their recruiting class rank? When's the last time you saw them in, like, 25th place? They are presently 18th. Yeah. When's the last no time? No five stars. <laughs> Total horse shit. Oregon's taking them all again. Oregon's got no five stars either. Louisville. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Louisville rebounds. Redbirds. Redbirds. Yeah. Swap, swap. Can Don Chaney play in that oh, yeah. game? No, I don't think that works that fast. They no, it doesn't work that right fast. I'm taking, okay. uh, I'm taking Louisville. Okay. All right, we've got the uh, Tax Act Texas Bowl. Texas A&M, Oklahoma State. That is also next Wednesday. Texas A&M giving two. I am taking Oklahoma State. Me too. Same thing. All right. Also, can next we get Wednesday. Evan Stewart in the portal? Ooh. So let's add JJ, our mm -hmm. quarterback, and mm -hmm. Evan Stewart. And I'm predicting uh, a lot, a lot of wins. I mean, then you could maybe, yeah. How many going to lose some of these wide receivers, left? though? I don't know how many wide receivers are going to be able to keep the next. Wegman's year. Oh got goodness. what three years left? Wegman, Connor, Wegman. Yeah, you get him to also come in and he'll back up. He'll back up your starter for a year. You um, know what I heard today? He over. Oh, you know what Talk I heard to today, Toast? <laughs> what? Oh no! This is what I heard today, and and we could have had somebody. We tried to get somebody on to have this discussion, mm -hmm. but we didn't get a response, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, I was told that it's very, very important that we try to get too many quarterbacks steps. in the portal. No, it's not possible. I, I'm just telling you. It's that's not what possible. I was told. Very important that we try that. It's not possible. Can't be done. OBB fans. Only a fucking idiot would bring something like that up. <laughs> OBB fans. Well... I told you we needed to bring two. We we discussed this. Whatever. I know you got to get one. Let, let me let me Toast just, got let me just fucking hammered for me, it. He though. totally got hammered. Let me just let me just break this down so it's so simple to everybody. Okay, forget about just forget about just forget about the whole college football thing. Okay, this is this now is all about money. All right, this is pure free agency. It's all about money. Okay, so you're telling me that you can go ahead and secure the services of a 28 year old to be a backup quarterback for your NFL team and pay him X amount of millions of dollars to do so, 
pay him more than you normally would, but you can't do that to an 18 year old or to a 22 year old. Are you yes. kidding me, bro? This is all about money. If you want to pay, listen, Oregon, they're paying two starting quarterbacks and one of them is going to sit for a year. So it can be done. I didn't say it's easy. Is it probable? No, it might not be. Does it take a lot of work? Absolutely. And if you want to do it without having to shell out like a ton of cash on both of them, yeah, it's going to be very, very tricky and, and, and a, 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 a coup to pull off. But don't tell them, clear your mind of can assholes. Don't tell them you can't do it. You got to think outside the box now. This is can season. Yes, yeah. can. Yeah. And Everything do. is possible. Everything is awesome. We're not taking a knee on this. No. No. Is Kneeling for is for pussies. <laughs> <laughs> we are so good at what we do. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. All right. Um, yeah, that's Let's uh, do it. Yeah. So the next no, Thursday no, is actually no. the game. <laughs> it's a it's it could go longer today. It's national signing day. I know. You, I'm just saying that there's no more games though, because next Thursday is Miami, so we'll drop on Thursday. That'll be the preview for that. So we're not gonna pick the Miami game now. Okay. No. So yeah. So no. yeah, yeah. So we're good. We I can got wrap questions. this thing up now. No, I got questions. Oh, questions. you're fucking kidding me. <laughs> even uh, even I want to go to bed. Right? We got All five right. questions. Oh my though. God. Okay. I mean, look Hurry at up. me for fuck's sake. Let's Hurry go. Up. Hurry Let's up. go. Hurry up. Five questions. In the past, this never started until actually January. Yeah. Women don't want cleaning tools or supplies. But what don't men want either for Christmas? Ties. Oh, I don't want ties, huh? Hmm. That is true. We don't want boxers. We don't want. Uh, come on. You're just lazy. I don't wear underwear. So I don't want underwear. I, 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 I know you don't. But like I do. So it's like yeah, we we don't want like that. That just that's never should be a gift. That don't even put that in our stocking stuffer. That's just such a lazy. No, just get, just go to the store and buy it for me later, and then I'll wear it or I'll buy it myself. But we don't need boxers. Mm -mm. Boxer briefs, nothing. No, pajama pants. <laughs> you always need those in your stuff mm -hmm. and your Jenner's. What do we got? I was thinking either mugs or keychains. One of the two. <laughs> Key mugs chain. or keychains. I don't mind a mug, though. Get a keychain every Christmas. Key hey, world is dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question number two. What is the worst high-budget movie of all time? Oh, uh, Waterworld. That was terrible. That did break bank all the time. Uh, my answer is going to be anything out of the Marvel series and, like, this season three up thing that they're doing. Any one of them. Just pick any one of them. They're the worst movies. Final answer. I don't think I got anything for you. Jenners? Uh, can I do Joss Whedon's Justice uh, Justice League? <laughs> Justice the horrible League. Yes, Justice League? Because yes, Zack Snyder's wasn't horrible. Joss Whedon's was dreadful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Although the three-hour opus was phenomenal. What the easiest fasting or fastest thing you could do to be more attractive. Easiest and fastest thing you could do to be more attractive. Face transplant. <laughs> what are you, Nick Cage all of a sudden? <laughs> you face off, baby. You're doing go. face off? I, yes. know, I, I know I said one thing. I know I, I said one thing, but I'm going to cheat and do two little things. If you smell good and you can dance a little bit, I think it makes you more attractive. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's, you know what? Pretty smart every now and then. Sometimes. Yeah. Close. But can you, yeah. Can it, it dress a little better. Yeah, it's cheap go. and fast. Like, you yeah. can't look if you. Like, you, you can paint a turkey. You can't gold, dance, you can't dance <laughs> homie. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if, if, if the rhythm's not in you, it's not in you. Mm, it's not like right. you can get that cheap and fast. Cologne, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the clothes thing. Cheap and fast. Uh, I still remember this what? scoop scoop. We played a show and it was downtown riverfront, right? It was like one of those, one of those places early in, in our career. And we went and I went to the back to, to like, and they had a bathroom attendant 
a very colorful guy. And I always, because when you said cologne, and all of a sudden he goes, if it smells like cologne, leave it alone. If it smells like fish, it's a tasty dish. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, here's the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Wise words. Oh, Wise wow. words from God. the bathroom attendant. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is special. <laughs> Probably inappropriate to name this week's show. If it oh, smells right. like now fish. why? If it smells like fish, <laughs> it smells like fish. It smells like fish. I mean, that is the name of the it If it smells like fish. Oh. If it smells like cologne, leave it alone. He just <laughs> randomly bleeded and bleeped that, put that into the universe. And and that was probably 20 plus years ago. And that thing has oh my never God. left my brain. As oh, soon as somebody says cologne, I immediately like, if it smells like cologne, leave it alone. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my oh goodness God. gracious. That's good. That's uh-huh. good. Um, I would say uh, getting your eyebrows taken care of. Okay. It's cheap. It's fast. Uh, and it makes you more attractive. Hmm. Okay. Jenner's? Jenner's? We're close, selling those. Said. Uh, I said close. close. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you said close. close. Yeah, you, yeah, 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 again, yeah, paint yeah, the turd yeah, gold. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, question four: What's one question you hate being asked? Any of these? <laughs> there you go. I, I'm, I'm seconding that. <laughs> For me and my line of work, right? It's just like, what happened? Oh yeah, yeah. Dude. So, so this just happened too, right? Uh, we just had a, like, it was um 10,000 square feet uh, house fire. You know, unfortunately, it's sad. Uh, people are going to get displaced and stuff like that, so I'm working on it. Now, I can't tell the neighbor what to do, um, but she asked me that question. She's like, hey, what's going on? You know, because she's the neighbor right next door. She comes right over to the fence, and, you know, she, I kind of look important, I guess. So she asked me the question. I'm like, and I looked at her right in the face. I'm like, oh, firefighters, firefighting things. Right. And she goes, well, I know that, but what's going on? And I'm like, well, you know that I'm going to tell you that I can't tell you what we're doing. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. And she just looked at me and I walked off, but that's my answer. What are you guys doing? (laughs) I don't know. It's not a flat tire. The other three just blew up on me. Here's your sign. All right. Question five. Question five. What? No scoop. This is a perfect question for him. What question do you hate being asked? I don't think he answered. Oh, he didn't answer. Um, are the sellers negotiable? <laughs> Can we look be... at the house one more time? Yeah. yeah. Are the sellers negotiable? I don't know. How about you just make a fucking offer? <laughs> and we'll figure it out from there. Figure it out. All right. <laughs> Let's end on the last one. Let's end on a fun one. What's a piece of technology from science fiction that you wish exists in real life? Oh, so easy. We already did that. No, we didn't. Yeah, you didn't. Oh, we've done this at some, some point. No, no, we didn't. That was a <laughs> that was a movie prop order from Star oh, Trek. Yeah, tra- thing, that, dude, that's my an- that's that's that was my official thing. answer. It's the same thing. Yeah, oh. that's the same question. Yeah, you've asked. No, it's that not. Before. It was like what no, movie prop? Which no, no it's, what it's, movie? It's, the movie it's prop, the same, science no, fiction, same thing. It's the same thing. That's another question. Oh, I was gonna say because this is the question again. What's a piece of technology from science fiction? that you wish existed in real life. Well, I kind of don't wish it exists in real life, but a thing from science fiction that does exist is UCF's national championship. All right. And okay. That was a long walk for that joke. Yeah. All right. Well, that was my five right in the balloon. (laughs) Just come on. What's the next one below it? All right. I'll just, what, what do you think is the best thing about living alone? There you go. Last one. That you don't have to worry about using, uh, 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 shit spray in the uh, bathroom. Okay. Poopery, they say. Poopery. Uninterrupted naps. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I was sort of in that vein. I was thinking bed to myself. You know, kind of get that every out. third day. I, I'm, I'm just, just letting one rip, bro. And not, just, you don't even care. There's, there's not like. All good. I don't care. No dog, nothing. They're not going to mm-hmm. even raise their eyebrows and look at you. How's the new puppy doing? 
Uh, we, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, manscaped and balls, yeah, he doesn't have his anymore. So, um, but nice. I don't, I don't think he acts like he doesn't have him anymore. Cause he's still trying to show his dominance. If you, if you know what I'm doing, but today the female decided to show her dominance right back. So we're progressing here in the Roman household. They'll, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Yeah. They're, they're figuring it yeah. out. Still trying to figure out their relationship. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit of a shithead. It's, it's okay. a bit much, but we're still, we're still working through some things, but so far, so good. So nice, far, so nice. Good. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool. I got I have a wonderful experience I'm getting to do on uh, in uh, uh, 24 yeah. hours or so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good How's luck. that going for you? Are you uh, on the I, fasting I start, period right now? No, no. I uh, Tomorrow morning, I uh, I got to drink. I got to start drinking the juice. Yeah. Oh, and before we name this episode, I just real quick, proud dad moment. Got to put the shot out there real quick to my daughter, Natalia, who made second team all county in volleyball. Um, and again, 7A, all those schools, but she's in eighth grade. So I was very, very proud of her. Congratulations, sweetheart, especially from very well done, Tally Bear. That a girl. Do you, you just brought that, made me just remember. Um, do you guys realize that right now Armando Blunt's 16? Yeah. Yeah. Turned 17 that. in February. Yeah. He's got a, and he's got a 4.6 GPA. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> a little smart. Teeny bit. Teeny bit. Yeah. yeah. He's going to do, he can do all right. Yeah. He's, he's going to be, he's right. going to be okay. Yeah. I think he's going to just fine in life. All right. So where do you want to name this thing, boys? Well, last thing, Scoop, did you have something you want to announce? Oh, you said oh, you, were, oh. you teased some sort of an announcement earlier in the show. No. No, you no, said after, no after not the for year. this week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, after the new year. Yeah, after okay. the new year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Scoopy things. Mm-hmm. All right. What should we name this thing? Well, I wrote down, uh, <laughs> if it smells like fish. It uh, smells like uh, fish. And I wrote down Matt Tasselback. I don't know why. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> down. I actually wrote one down. Go, man. Yeah. Uh, he's a redwood. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's combine them. Redwood Hasselback. Tasselback. Tasselback. Redwood. Redwood Tasselback. Redwood Tasselback. There we go. Yeah. Redwood uh, Tasselback. 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 Yes. Yes. It's yes. Beck. Yeah. Beck. Beck. Okay. Tasselback. All there right. you go. All right. Tasselback. So we'll uh we'll drop again Thursday. That'll be game day. For the Bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl, that'll be a 2.15 kick time. So we'll be dropping that morning first thing or like at midnight, whatever. And then, uh, guys, we'll have to do a recap show. Recap show. So will we do the recap show uh, Thursday afternoon, evening, or do it on Friday? What do you guys think? Uh, I... Are you guys even in town? I'm going to be here. See. I'm not available on Friday. Kenzie's got a two-day tournament at uh, PJ All National. All right, then we'll have to do it Thursday after the game. Saturday. All right, let's do it Thursday. We'll do it Thursday after the game. Do it live. Do it live. Mm. Beautiful. All right, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. As always, go Kings. Go. Bang. Let's go.